so much for clicking on this video. I really appreciate it. This is Cattleya guatemalensis. And a week or so ago, I did a video about Lekka versus Lava Rock, in which I kind of packed in a lot of information about the media. And then I threw in a little bit of why I do what I do, because Lekka versus Lava Rock, why am I using one as opposed to the other? However, I wanted in this video to do a little thought process with regards to the orchid in question and my decision-making process as to what am I using because clearly the Cattleya guatemalensis would be ideal for lava rock as well. But in that uh, comparison video, I explained that lava rock is extremely detrimental to the roots when it comes to repotting or up-potting and Cattleyas are prone to dumping their roots. So there is a cleanup that needs to happen if you're growing a cattleya in a pot, even though most of it is inorganic, but there is rot and decay happening for cattleyas dumping their roots. And especially bifoliate cattleyas, the divas, I always call them divas because they are so finicky with their roots. So when I got her a year ago, I was uh, very tempted to go straight into the pot clean up straight away and put her into my preferred setup, which is Lekka with self-watering. However, being a bifoliate, that could have made the orchid stall or get set back dramatically because I'm not respecting the fact that the roots that she came in, which was in bark, are accustomed to the media I was going to put her in, which is Lekka, and then self-watering, which is much more moisture retentive than bark. There is no wet dry cycle in the setup and how I operate. So I wanted to break down my thought process regarding this orchid once she started growing root nubbins. I immediately addressed the situation, took the opportunity. It was February, it was still sort of winter for us. Indoor temperatures were a little bit warmer than outdoors. It's not exactly the mental ideal moment to be doing a repot, but it's not about the calendar date. When the orchid says go, it's go time, regardless of the season. And then it's just a question of babying her. In my thought process, I was con contemplating big orchid, inorganic media, no need to worry about the size of the pot, especially because it is inorganic media. And then the only question about size of the pot would be, have you got the space in order to accommodate that pot? So I had the size of the pot, but I also had the space to accommodate the pot. And why I didn't put her into her forever pot is something I wanted to address right now as well in order to explain my thought process, how I go about dealing with pottings, repottings and up -pottings. And in this scenario, I'm discussing rhizome. Now you can see how big an orchid she is just by the height, but the rhizome, there's also a lot of gaps in between when a new growth starts and then starts to develop and grow. There's at least five centimeters between one growth and the other. Now, she is not a climber in the, in the traditional sense. She's a rambler. And then when you can do it right, it's not always, doesn't always work that way. You can actually train a growth, instead of coming out and going to another direction of the pot, you can train the growth to basically go according to the light source and keep the orchid a little bit more contained in the pot. But as there are no guarantees with orchids, even though one tries to do the best one can with regards to training a growth and keeping an orchid contained in the pot, my thought process in this case was she is very, very top heavy. I didn't have many roots for anchoring because I cleaned her up pretty radically. So if I were to put her in a very big pot, her forever pot for at least three to four years, then I would have a very top heavy orchid that isn't anchored in the pot properly. I wouldn't be able to move her to flush because the initial stages of adapting and getting an orchid acclimated into the new setup is a lot of flushing, which incurs a lot of movement of the pot, which is also not a good thing for new roots. So my thought process is, put her in a pot that will last her one year. 
for her to get completely anchored in. And she is completely anchored in. Put her in a media that is going to be a little bit more forgiving when it comes to up-potting. Because after a year, I will not be needing to mess with the roots. I will just have to get her out of the pot and up-pot her with as little stress as possible because she is a bifoliate. So that eliminated lava rock immediately because lava rock is not forgiving on roots. Leka much more so. So then the next step is fine. You wait a year. The orchid is now anchored in the pot. What's next? Well, she is going to bloom eventually. I do have two sheaths, one of which has gone brown, but this one is still green. I have a bump and a shadow in this one. So I'm going to wait out the blooming unless she starts growing new roots. But if my memory proves correct from last year, she grew new roots first before she actually bloomed. I already have new roots in the pot from the growths that are now in sheath. So have I missed the mark? It's possible. But because these roots are new and because I have them in a setup that is more forgiving with regards to up-potting her, I'm going to hedge a bet that I'm going to be absolutely fine to not destroy or disturb this orchid too much when I go to up-pot her. My next plan, of course, is the next pot, which I will consider her forever home for the next three to four years. This one. Look at the size of that thing. That is uh, 20 centimeters, 22 centimeters, square pot, self-watering. That's the plan here. But when you look at the comparison to what she's in right now, one could say, well, that's a bit exaggerated. Yes and no. Yes, because of the comparison of the previous pot. But if I show you the square pot next size up, you can see where my thought process is going. That creeping rhizome of the Guatemalensis is almost within one year going to be filling that pot as well. And then I would have to do it again. Two years in a row consecutive, not happening. That's why I'm bumping it up to something that looks completely exaggerated. But my thought process with regards to the strategy of growing and cultivating this orchid on and leaving her be is that creeping rhizome, the very vigorous root system, the size of the orchid, top heavy, but now she's going to be stable in that pot. So that is an example of how I deal or try to deal with and think ahead the growing habit of the orchid based on the rhizome and based on her attributes of being fussy about the roots in the hopes that when it comes time to potting her up, all I have to do is somehow manage to get her out of that pot with the least root disturbance, and then just put her in here and fill up with Lekka again, and then leave her be. So that is how my thought process is with regards to orchids that have a long creeping rhizome, not climbing, creeping how I choose my media, the strategy of the pot while getting established, and then thinking ahead with regards to long-term so I don't have to mess around again. I hope that was helpful. I hope the thought process made sense. If you have any of your own thoughts that I have not taken into consideration to be able to grow an orchid and not mess around too much, then please let me know in the comments below, especially when it comes to bifoliate cattleyas. Others are a little bit more forgiving, like my Maxima over here. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for being here. Have yourselves a wonderful day and stay safe. Take care. Bye.